Okay class, so um, this is the second part of that uh, video where I am going to use this uh, uh, function editor in combination with the CRO to show you the various uh, features and buttons and these uh, uh, knobs of uh, this AppLab SG1610C 10 MHz bandwidth function editor. Okay, so uh, this function editor is already powered with the mains. So if I switch on this power button, uh, we will start seeing these uh, displays. So before that I switch it off. Uh, I am going to use this BNC to BNC cable, okay, uh, where both ends are BNC and uh, I will be uh, connecting it to this 50 ohm output um, uh, knob and we will be connecting to the one channel of CR. Okay, and like I mentioned, I make sure that this symmetric button is off, DC level is off, amplitude is at minimum level. Okay, all these other things are also to the minimum position. Okay, and then I switch on my function generator. So it goes to some particular, you know, uh, depending on uh, its uh, uh, history, it goes to some particular, you know, uh, 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 mode for the output. Okay, so like I mentioned, uh, right now I am taking output from these, uh, you know, uh, 50 ohm output uh, uh, BMC connector, uh, which is uh, standard output for this uh, functionator. Right now, if you see here, the sinusoidal uh, 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 light is glowing. That means it is giving output in the sine waveform. If I want to change the waveform, I press this waveform button, it goes to this triangular output and also to rectangular output. Now nothing changes in terms of the frequency and amplitude because now it is generating um, you know these signals either of a rectangular, uh, triangular or sine wave of the same frequency and amplitude. So we will verify this uh, looking into the CRO screen also. But yeah, uh, initially we uh, firstly uh, try to understand all these uh, knobs. So right now this, uh, so here you see this kilohertz uh, LED is glowing that means uh, the frequency and this 1k is also glowing so which is the order of uh, magnitude for the frequency. So right now the frequency is 1.4144 kilohertz. If you want to decrease the frequency you can use this knob but it will take very long time uh, if you want to go to let's say you know 100 hertz or if you want to go to 100 kilohertz. So this is this knob is fine if you want to slightly change the frequency. Otherwise, you press this range button once, it goes to the hundreds of range. So right now the frequency is 143 hertz. And then with this knob, you can decrease it to come to precisely the 100 hertz. If you want to take the 100 hertz as output. Or if you want to go to uh, you know uh, 10 kilohertz range or even 100 kilohertz range, use this range button and once you reach to the right, right range then you use this uh, 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 frequency knob to change the uh, or to uh, precisely you know arrange the uh, the frequency uh, so this uh, thing is for your uh, you know uh, amplitude so right now the amplitude of this sine wave is 0.8 volt peak to peak so it's a glowing volt and the peak to peak knob is going. If you uh, uh, press this button, it will go to RMS. So 0.8 volt, volt peak to peak corresponds to 0.3 volt RMS. So 0.8 volt peak to peak is 0.4 volt uh, um, um, amplitude and 0.4 divided by square root 2 is basically your 0.3 something uh, volt which is basically your RMS. Okay. Uh, now, if you want to increase the uh, the voltage, uh, use uh, uh, use this amplitude button, and then you can generate up to 10 volt amplitude with this function generator. That is the maximum. So 10 volt means 20 volt peak to peak. So let's say I set it to 10 volt peak to peak.
Okay, now let's see this waveform on the CRO screen. So I have connected this to one channel of the CRO, and now I switch on CRO. So I believe by this, by the time you see uh, this particular uh, tutorial, uh, you would have already seen the tutorial of uh, this video tutorial of. A digital uh, oscilloscope or a digital CRO. Okay, so it is showing me something over here. Um, the most beautiful feature of the you know digital oscilloscope is this auto set button. So if you set this, press this auto set button, it will bring the signal into the you know this viewing window in a very nice manner. Okay, suppose you have uh, changed all these things and then uh, something like that. And you have completely messed up uh, by uh, viewing your signal. Simply press this auto set button. It will bring your signal into a very nice way in the middle of this display. And you can also read all these uh, features of this signal. So, for example, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 9.12 volt. It is connected to channel one. Channel two is off. Okay. Uh, so here it's showing a 10 volt, but here it's showing a 9.9, .9, actually 9 volt peak to peak. So this is how it is uh, supposed to give, but because of some uh, mismatch and this quality of uh, this uh, uh, um, device is not very high, so uh, it's not giving us 10 volt. But this is the, uh, the 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 number which you should believe. So if you want 10 volt, you observe this thing and slightly adjust the amplitude from here so that actually it becomes like 10 volt. So I think there is a lag of one volt bit between the two and this 10 volt peak to peak corresponds to 3.5 uh, volt rms and the frequency you see here uh, 10.6 kilohertz and that's what we have generated from here you know 100 uh, sorry 100.54 uh, in the kilohertz range this kilohertz uh, light is glowing okay so that's what we see uh, in the oscilloscope screen uh, the duty cycle is 50 percent because this is a symmetric signal and amplitude uh, uh, um, um, I think something wrong here let's ignore that okay so um, now let's uh, look at these two together so that we understand the functioning of this uh, function generator so as we change the range, so right now it is uh, 100 kilohertz. If I decrease the frequency by a factor of 10, the frequency has decreased. So we, I press this auto set button and uh, I will get this uh, signal again over here. And the frequency is right now is 11.6 kilohertz and which is also showed by your function monitor. Okay, now waveform, right now this is the sine wave waveform. You can generate a triangular wave and a corresponding triangular wave is shown and you press this once again, you get a, a square wave. Okay, so a square wave is also shown to you. Now in the CRO you see these two markers. Uh, this button, if you, if you move your signal upward or downward, uh, your this uh, level also changes. This tells the zero level. Where is the zero of your signal? So I just uh, bring this closer. So this mark corresponds to the zero level of your signal. So here it's a very symmetric signal with the no DC. So the middle line is basically the zero volt, and this uh, that's why this uh, 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 pointer is almost in the middle. Okay, so we have seen. Uh, uh, the, that toggling between the, the different waveform can be done this way here. We can use this range button. Now let's come to the attenuation. So right now I'm using this 10 volt. Um, peak to peak is 10.3 uh, 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 volt. Or uh, let's go to amplitude. Now peak to peak is fine. 10.3 uh, volt is the amplitude. Now if I press this attenuation button once, okay. So right now it is 1.1 volt. So if I press this auto set button, 
let's do it for the sine wave so v peak to peak is now 1 volt okay as sh uh, shown by here now if i press this attenuate so we have decreased the 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 voltage by a factor of 10 that is 20 db attenuation now if i press this once again a 40 db attenuation the signal has further decrease i auto set that and now it is 0.11 volt that means 110 millivolt so now this millivolt uh, 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 light is glowing and the number you read is 110 so basically the voltage output is 110 millivolt peak to peak and here also you read that this is 108 or 110 millivolts and if I press this attenuation button once again so this goes to 60 dB so right now the output is 11 millivolt if I set this auto set once again um, now this is beyond the capability of this thing but uh, we can still do that manually so right now you read here the peak to peak voltage is 10.6 millivolt that is close to 11 millivolt okay so this is like 1.1 kilohertz 1.1 kilohertz 10 millivolts so this is kind of the smallest signal now if you further decrease the amplitude this is the smallest voltage you can generate with the function generator so now the amplitude is the smallest and attenuation is the largest the 60 dB so the output is 0.8 millivolt so this is the uh, you cannot decrease you cannot further decrease this uh, volts per division so this is the smallest you will see so this almost like a noise signal so now you cannot trust this number so it's almost going, almost going like you know 1 millivolt so this is showing like 0.8 millivolt which is like you know 1 millivolt so that's what it is fluctuating between okay so you knew that using this attenuation button and the power button uh, this uh, amplitude button you can somehow um, get a nice signal so let's make it to volt peak to peak okay so we understood this range button waveform button attenuation button and amplitude button simply you can select between the display between the peak to peak and the rms this mode you don't want to use it so i'm not going to talk about it uh, this uh, uh, um, um, single pulse is also uh, not for this one so i'm not uh, going to uh, uh, ignore it right now now we come to this uh, symmetric thing so if i so right now this is in the off position if i switch it on the sig and then bring it almost in the middle okay, this knob is slightly uh, out of uh, uh, this thing so right now you see the duty cycle is 50 percent okay sorry duty cycle will not change in the sine wave uh, let's do this thing uh, but you understand how the symmetry is changing uh, I go to one extreme it becomes asymmetric in this direction and if I go to other extreme it becomes asymmetric in that direction okay but if I do it for a, uh, a square wave platform uh, a square wave uh, thing so you see I am going almost from a almost like 88 percent uh, duty cycle to something like you know uh, 14 percent duty cycle so if you want to generate a, a signal of you know this different duty cycles you will be using these symmetric button otherwise you switch it off same thing is with the DC level so right now the DC level is off and that's why your zero voltage is in the middle of uh, uh, this signal if I switch on the DC level suddenly you see the voltage has gone depending on how much our DC I'm applying okay so I bring it uh, somewhere in the middle so that tells that now the DC level is zero and now if we if I go in that direction I am adding positive uh, DC voltage and if I am uh, moving it in this direction I am actually adding a negative DC voltage so I decrease the volts per div division um, 
so it's clear it will be clear to you so right now the zero level is here you see this the marker the zero level marker is here and the signal is going from here to here so it's zero level is somewhere in this middle so it's a 2 volts per division so this is 2 volt this is 2 volt that is 4 plus 1 5 so i have added minus 5 uh, volt as a dc offset and if i go in the other direction so 2 2 4 and then f uh, 5 so um, i should put the trigger over here so right now i have added 2 plus 4 Okay, so again now I have added a plus 5 volt DC level to this AC signal or you can do this to even to a sine wave. So right now I am imposing, so this sine wave is basically uh, 2 volt peak to peak or 1 volt amplitude superimposed on 5 volt DC. Okay, and in these cases um, you have to be very careful when you do these amplifications. Okay, so if you don't want that, you keep your DC level thing in a off position. That was your DC level and symmetric buttons. So now probably you have understood the everything uh, in this CRO uh, using this 50 ohm output. Now from the digital experiments, if you want to use your digital signal so now the the difference between the digital and the you know analog signal is in the form of waveform so there is a difference between the pulse that is ttl and your square wave so here the square wave is going the swing is from minus pp uh, voltage minus amplitude to the positive amplitude so it is going from you know uh, this negative amplitude to the positive amplitude and the zero level is in the middle if you take output from if you take the output from our uh, this thing ttl or cmos you will see so in digital uh, you know we know that uh, zero voltage corresponds to logic 0 and 5 volt corresponds to logic 1. So uh, your TTL signal will be between 0 to 5 volts. So the, you see this marker, this marker 1 is at the base of the this line. So that means this is the 0 voltage line and this is the high voltage. So now right now this is 1 volt per division, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the 4 volts. Okay. So, uh, almost 4 volt output is being generated if you take the output from uh, uh, this TTL signal. Okay. And if you change this amplitude button, you see, nothing happens. Because TTL signal is a constant signal. It's a logic signal uh, which is used for logic 0 and logic 1. So, logic 0 corresponds to 0 voltage. Logic 1 corresponds to this high voltage which is 4 volts in this particular case and that's why uh, changing this amplitude button uh, does not do anything to uh, so uh, remember whenever you are taking output from this TTL button uh, this amplitude uh, things will be disabled but that's not completely true if you want to change amplitude then you have to use this particular knob this CMOS adjust knob so right now you see this is a 4 volt I can switch it on and I can further increase the amplitude for example there are some circuits where 5 volt is must so you see nothing still happens uh, with this uh, thing, nothing changes, but actually the voltage is adjusted by this CMOS button. So this is a amplitude button when you want to use the CMOS signal, but I think 4 volt is fine as even as logic 1. So you should be, uh, you know, keeping it in the disabled mode. But if you want to use, you know, like you want do want to give a 5 volt signal, you can give it. So amplitude does not depend. But the frequency will change. So frequency button does, uh, uh, you know, uh, works.
okay so you can change the frequency or the amplitude will be 4 volts so yeah that's it for all these uh, uh, features of your function generator i hope you have um, understood most of the thing uh, please you know go through this video um, again or you know uh, uh, you know certain uh, at certain points if you have any confusion and always uh, you know use uh, function generator in combination with your cro so that whatever you do on these panels over here you can actually verify on your actually voltage output screen okay so yeah i am ending this video now